Good evening, Brand. It gives me the same measure of thrill to get to meet you. It's our first night here in, in Toledo, trusting that this will be a great time for all of us, a revival in our hearts of the grace of God and his power to be made known among his people again. I've looked forward for this time since I was in Cleveland last year. They told me of Toledo up here, and it's my first time to ever be at the city. That sometime maybe I could get up here, and Brother Baxter told me that I was coming up here. I was so happy to get to come, to meet new friends, and to meet old. And our, I trust that our six nights of stay here will bring joy to you and myself. That I know it will be for me. It's already that way, just to get to be here. And above all, I trust that God will heal every sick and crippled person in our midst that comes. I believe he will. If we can just only have faith in him, the work is complete. And now, I see it's very warm and it's sticky, but we can't govern the weather. God does that. And I'm happy to, to be in God's service if it's real, real cold or real, real hot. It doesn't matter, just so He's there. There's a little play a song we used to sing, It's heaven to me wherever I be if He is there. And I imagine it was one of the greatest meetings that the Hebrew children ever had when the Son of God came to them in the fiery furnace and all that heat. And he, everywhere he's at, if it's in heat or if it's in fright like Daniel in the lion's den or wherever it may be, it's heaven where Jesus is. And he's promised to us that no matter how small our church was, even until two or three gathered in my name, I'll be in their midst. So in this audience tonight of maybe 2,000 people, I'm sure that He's fulfilling his word to be with us. Now, if we can find favor with him, I believe that he will manifest himself to us. And let us know that he's here by his supernatural presence, maybe in the realms that may be a little strange to some of us. But Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And his power is unlimited, and his presence is always. Now, just for an opening night, can you hear all right? Is the acoustics carrying to the, I mean, the voice in the back of the building all right? Can you hear back there? If you can, raise your hand. That's, that's fine. All right. Now, I'm not a very good, I have a very good voice if uh, maybe they fix this, step it up just a little bit. Brother Baxter has practically enough voice for both of us, so he, they have to lower it for him and raise it up for me. And, but these, some difference in our size. And now, the meeting will be what you determined it in your own heart. Of these six nights, it can be a great blessing to you, or it can be a great hindrance to you. It can be a time that all these people sitting here in these chairs can be at liberty walking around out here on the street. It can be to those that's on the cots delivered. To those suffering with cancer and heart troubles and all back in here, it can be to every one of you a deliverance. Now, if God will help me to let it be known to you just how simple it is, then you receive it. Now, I wish to read this scripture, which is familiar to many of us. It's concerning the Old Testament and of the prophet Moses. And God sending him forth to lead the children of Israel. It's found in the 23rd chapter, and it's beginning with the 20th verse of Exodus, Exodus 23:20. 20. And I'll read to the first phase of the 23rd verse. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him, obey his voice, provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions. 
for my name is in him. But if thou wilt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then will I be an enemy unto thy enemies, an adversary unto thy adversaries, for mine angels shall go before thee. Now we just bow our heads for a moment. Our Heavenly Father, it thrills our hearts tonight to know that you're still Jehovah, the same Heavenly Father that was in the beginning, you're here at the end, and you will always be the same Christ. And we thank thee for thy divine love to mankind. And as our hearts ponder over this subject tonight, thinking that one day we were aliens cut off from God without mercy, without God, without Christ, aliens in the world, alienated from God and from righteousness. But in due season, when we had nothing to do with it, Christ in his love died the innocent for the guilty, bringing us now to a full knowledge and of statues of the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know we'll see him, for we'll have a body like his own glorious body. We'll see him as he is, free from sickness, free from sin, free from death. Oh, how we groan in the Spirit to be clothed with them immortal bodies. But, Father, while we're journeying from this life's journey, screaming from the right and left and throwing out the lifeline, bringing others to the knowledge of the saving grace of the Son of God, we desire health in these bodies. And we know that Thou hast made a provided way for this. And, dear God, I pray that in these nights that is to come here in this auditorium, that you will manifest yourself in such a way that there will not be one sick or feeble person in our midst. God, I have two more meetings according to schedule before I leave for dark Africa. And Lord, here my own homeland that I love, oh, Father God, pour out your blessings in a double potion. Grant it, Lord. And in this city tonight where we come for the first time, may the hands of your Holy Son be stretched out in tender mercy and embrace every sick person and every sinner and bring them to thee, Lord, for salvation and healing. And may the angel of God, who has fed me since the day I came on earth and is here tonight, may he manifest Christ to the audience in such a way that there won't be a lack of anything in the meeting. May faith be so high till it be predominant over every sickness and disease in the building. And may the Lord Jesus' name be magnified here in this city until there will be an old-fashioned revival breakout that will go from citywide, even nationwide, grant it, Lord, just before the coming of the just one who we all look forward for his coming. Now help me, dear God, in these next few moments, speaking to the audience, give words that will encourage faith. For we ask it in the name of thy Son, Jesus, our Savior. Amen. My speaking is limited. I, Mr. Baxter is the speaker. But on the first night, I usually have a little more time than ever because I come in with, out of the rush of the day and to enter a meeting, which I've been in for quite a while. I'm tired and worn out. But I always take the first night concerning the manifestation of the Spirit that I might get it to the people personally, and I ask my audience each first night if they will help me as I try to, upon this night, to let the people first see the background of what all this means. Now, I'm just as conscious as, as the rest of you that there is much fanaticism hooked into divine healing and to the religion, which we call Christian religion today. But many of you people who are Christian, and you know there is fanatics, but that doesn't take away from Christ. That only adds to Christ to let them know that there's got to be a real, genuine Holy Spirit for the bogus action to be made off of. If there is no real one, then the bogus would have to be the real one. And otherwise, if, if you see a bogus dollar, a counterfeit dollar bill, there has to be a real one for that to be made off of, or it would be the original and the real. So when you see somebody who doesn't live like a Christian, yet profess to be a Christian, 
and doesn't act like a Christian, but just simply claims to be and, and lives that kind of a way, you know that back behind there somewhere, there's a real genuine Christian somewhere. See? Well, now, there's many things that's put in the act of divine healing, which it is not God uh, doing it. But behind all of it proves that there's a real, genuine God that really, a fountain open of divine healing. You're not here tonight, I don't believe, just for curiosity. If you are, of course, God will, will see that your curiosity is satisfied. I hope and trust that. Now, I want to say the first thing, that divine healing, the only way to approach anything that represents God is smoothly and sanely and based solid on the Word of God. If it's built on anything else besides God's Word, it's an error. It's wrong. Don't fool with it. And if, and if it wasn't in God's divine Word tonight and could not be proven that it is God's divine will and His Word, then I wouldn't have nothing at all to do with it, and I would rather die a sinner than to die a hypocrite or a deceiver. I believe I would have a better chance if there would be a chance after death, which I do not believe there is. But if there would be, I'd have a, a better conscience to face God and say, God, I just didn't believe you and I just let it go, than to face him and be a hypocrite. I believe the scripture says it's better to be an infidel than a hypocrite. So I, I love Christ, and I may be turned down at that day. But since I have been saved, there's been something in my heart, I believe if he would appear tonight and say, I can't receive you into heaven, you turn away and go down into the place with the devil. If there is such a thing that I could remember him while I was down there, I believe that the love that I have in my heart would burn for him if I was down there. For what he's been to me, I may not have much knowledge of the Word and so forth, but in my heart I have a love for him that I can't express. He's more than my life to me. And now, divine healing is based on his Word, and we know that God is sovereign. He, people think that God can just do anything he wants to do. God cannot do anything. God is obligated to his word. God cannot lie. The Bible says he can't. So there's one thing that God can't do. And when God says anything and makes a promise, God can't take that promise back because he's God and he's sovereign, and he can't go back on that promise. Now, how many believe that's true? So there'd have to be no more arguing, whether, which I can prove it, or any minister of the gospel can prove that divine healing was included in the atonement, for he was wounded for our transgressions, with his stripes we are healed. Is that right? That settles it just on one. Then if it wasn't in the atonement and God's word said so, it's right anyhow, because God is obligated to his word. God is obligated to his brother Baxter the other day in a discussion, gave the most beautiful illustration I ever heard on it. He said, in a certain land there was a righteous king, and the king was going to execute a slave. And the, the laws of the land said that this king uh, must kill this slave. And the slave standing before the king was trembling and nervous, and the king said, Now don't, said, what do you require before I kill you, or have your life taken? He said, A glass of water. And the king gave him the glass of water, and he was standing, he, he was so nervous he couldn't get it to his mouth, it was just spilling all out like that. He said, now look, straighten up, said, I'm not going to take your life until you drink that water. And the slave looked up at him, throwed the water out. Now the king had to let him go for his word. He was a righteous king. He was a good man. And God is more than a good man. He's sovereign. And when he says so in his word, Whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them, that's whatsoever things you desire. See? These things that I do, shall you also, for I go unto my Father, that's true. He can't take that back. It's true. God has made the promise. He was wounded for our transgressions. With his stripes we were healed. That's true. Now, just for a word now, when Jesus Christ, he came to rid sin. 
You believe that, don't you? All right. Now, sickness is an attribute of sin. Before we had any sin, we had no sickness. Sin came, and sickness followed sin as an attribute of sin. We all know that. Any sickness is may not your sin. It's either a direct or indirect. It may you inherited it somewhere, the weakness of your people through sin. And it's dropped down, as you said, each generation getting weaker and wiser. But it's either direct or indirect caused from sin. Now, when Jesus, for instance, like this, if a big serpent was here or a great big uh, uh, something that had me by the side with his paw and was hurting me with his paw. Now, it's not necessary for me to have to cut the animal's paw off, but if something hits him in the head and kills his head, that kills him all over. And when Jesus atoned for sin, he kills sin and every one of its attributes. He killed a serpent from its head. You believe that? Now, that's true. Then, if he atoned for sin, he atoned for sickness, because sickness is secondarily an attribute of sin. Our weary, our troubles, our fears, and all of those things are attributes from sin. Now, when Jesus died at Calvary, he settled a sin question forever before the Father because he was a perfect sacrifice for our sin. He was our kinsman, redeemer. You Bible scholars know what I'm speaking of. Like uh, Boaz, when he was uh, had to be a kinsman, redeemer to redeem the lost estate of Ruth, and he had to make a public testimony. And then everything that Ruth had fell to him as he redeemed all of her possessions. And he, of course, he got uh, when he redeemed Neoma, why well, he got Ruth in, which is a type of the Gentile bride, and so forth. But he was a kinsman redeemer. Now God, who is in spirit, unveiled himself in a body of flesh, which was his son, Christ Jesus. And God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, and become kinfolk to human beings to suffer the penalty that he had put on the human himself. And he became kinfolk and a redeemer. In other words, like this, we was put in the devil's pawn shop, and Jesus paid the price and brought us out. See? The price was already paid. Now, when Jesus died at Calvary, he saved every sinner in the world, as far, or ever would be in the world, as far as God was concerned. Now, you wasn't saved ten years ago, or two years ago, or three years ago. I wasn't saved seventeen years ago. I was saved two thousand years ago. But I accepted it seventeen years ago. Now. Jesus didn't come down and die just for me or die just for you. He settled a sin question. But it'll never do us any good until we accept it. It's your accepting as him as your personal Savior, and it's by faith that you receive it and believe it. Now, in Hebrews 3, 1, the Bible said that he's the high priest of our confession. Now, he's sitting at the right hand of the Father to make intercessions for us upon our confession. Now, remember, it isn't how much you cry, it isn't how much you repent, it isn't how loud you can cry to God, it isn't how sincere you can be, it's how much faith that you have when you come to Him. He doesn't save you on the merits of your prayer, He doesn't save you upon the merits of your righteousness, He saves you upon the merits of your faith. It's by faith are you saved in that true grace. Now, you come to the altar realizing that you're a sinner, and you are sorry for your sin. You repent of what you've done, and you can stay there and cry for a week in and out, and it will never save you until you believe in your heart that you are saved. Is that right? Then you confess it. Now, he can't do nothing for you until you confess it. Is that right? For he is the high priest of conjunction of your confession. He can do nothing. You confess me before man, I'll confess you before the Father. Is that right? What you say I've done down here for you, that's what I say the Father that you that I've done for you. He's the high priest. You get that young man? The high priest of your confession. Now, here he is sitting here to make intercession 
on my confession, and I have a right to confess that he's done anything for me that's in the redemptive blessings. There you are. What was the redemptive blessings? He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace upon him was his stripes were healed. Is that right? That's every believer's possession. That's mine. You know what I find in traveling? I say this with humbleness. I find two classes of people, one the fundamental, the other the full gospel. They're both fine classes of people. But here's the trouble. The fundamental know what they are positionally in Christ, but don't have much faith to exercise it. The full gospel's got plenty of faith, but don't know what they are. That's right. Just like a man's got a lot of money in the bank, but he don't know how to write a check. The other man's got no money in the bank, and he knows how to write a check. If I could ever get them together, if you realize that you're a son and daughter of God and the deposit's made in Calvary and you've got a checkbook in your hand, write anything you want to on there, God's promised to take care of it. It's in the bank. It was deposited at Calvary. Your salvation, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, your uh, wearies and things gone, and every one of you to be perfectly made well because your redemption is already redeemed before God, and he's sitting at the right hand of God to make intercessions upon your confession. I'm a Baptist for that. Not, I'm a Pentecostal Baptist. I got the Holy Ghost, so that changed my things a little bit. But look, brother, that would almost make me shout to think that I have a right to anything that he died for. He put it in the deposit box at Calvary and give me a checkbook to write whatever you want to. I'll take care of it. Just send it up to me. <laughs> oh, my. That's wonderful. There he is. To make, now, how do you get saved? Let's take it in a childlike form, wherever believer, no matter if you're, what church you belong to, and your pastor, if he's the right man, he will tell you that, that you can only be saved through faith, not through works, through faith. Now, you believe that he saved you. Now, first thing that comes from the heart, you believe it. Then you walk up and confess and say, I accept Jesus as my personal Savior. I believe he saved me. There's not a physical thing in the world that you could prove that you're saved. Your eyes are the same color. Got the same shirt on your hat on. Go outside and the old gang says ain't nothing to that. But you believe there's something good, don't you? Now, how? what if you say, well, I'm going to see how it works out. It'll never work out until you keep your testimony going. You believe you're saved. You act like you're saved. You say you're saved. And you associate with those that are saved, and it works salvation. Is that right? And the same thing will take place by divine healing. You believe you're healed. You act like you're healed. You say you're healed. And he's the high priest of your confession to make good anything that you confess that he's done before for the Father. There it is. I've seen sarcoma, cancer, and brother, the kings and rulers of the nations and earth won't call for fanaticism. You know that. But it's the truth as I'm standing here. It's God's eternal truth. When you believe it and act upon your faith, God will bring it to pass. Now, there's no one, people have been said, well, I can lay my hands upon you and I have powers in my hands to heal you. Now, when anyone says that, you remember that person is telling us something that's untrue. There's no one in the world can heal anybody. Healing comes only from God Almighty. Not even Jesus Christ claimed to be a healer. He said, It's not me that doeth the work, it's my Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the work. Now, if the Son of God didn't claim to be a divine healer, how much more a man? No man can do what Christ has already done. No man could save you. No matter how much you pray for you, you are only saved by faith. And no man can heal you. You're only healed by faith. Now, you ought to read the Word, not even have to have a preacher. You just stand there and read the Word and believe it. But God is love. And he sends preachers around, anoint preachers, and they preach the Word, see it on the Word, and preach the baptism of the Spirit, being born again, and you believe it, accept it, and get born again. Is that right? Now, now you are to believe divine healing. But if you don't believe divine healing, then God sends ministers around preaching divine healing. You accept it, believe it, and get healed. Now, since those works have been going on for many of years, God in his mercy has done something else for us. 
which has sent his angel from glory to manifest his people, to his people the prophetic gift of God, which can only bring faith up into the level to where you can be healed or accept your healing from Jesus Christ. Now, many of you know, how many has ever heard the story about my, the angel of the Lord appearing to me? Let's see your hand. Practically half of you here. Now, dear Christian friends, everyone understands now clearly before going to the, this year and start the line that I do not claim to be a divine healer, that there's nothing at all that I could do for you, my dear brother and sister, only pray for you. And that no other man could heal you, only healing lays in God. How many know that? Uh, only healing lays in God. And that I say that it's based upon the Word of God, and always the eating of the pudding is the proof of it. There's just so many now healed to it beyond question, you know that. Literally millions in the last few years. Now, I believe that gifts and callings are without repentance. You believe that too. That's true. I don't believe that everybody's foreordained, but I believe that God foreordains certain things to happen, and it'll be there. Like, I believe in the grace of God. I believe that there's going to be a church at the last day, a church without spot or wrinkle. And I believe that's eternally secured before God, that there will be a church. But now who's going to be in it? I don't know. I trust that I will be and you will be. But I don't know that. I only live by faith. See? But I believe that there will be a church. It will be secured without spot or wrinkle. Who's its members? I do not know. But I believe, according to the Scripture, it's all those who are born again. Now, now healing. And on this mission, I was born in the state of Kentucky, uh, up in the mountain section, in a little old log cabin. My book's back there. If you care to pick it up, well, it's all right. See, give the story of it. And as I was saying, my, my people were very poor, formerly Catholic, and Irish on both sides. My mother's Harvey and my father's Brandon. The only change of blood was in there is all when my grandfather married a Oklahoma Indian. Broke the blood a little and have just a little colored blood by the Indian. Now, and then being when I was born on April the 6th, 1909, about 5 o'clock in the morning, we lived in a little cabin. There's a picture in the book. We didn't have windows like you people have that live in nice homes. We had just a door that you push back like a little window, you know, push back. Don't guess you've all ever seen anything like that up in this country. But a little old window, you push back. One, he was the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Do you believe that? God told Jeremiah, said, before you was even formed in your mother's womb, I knew you, sanctified you, and ordained you a prophet over the nation before he ever come from his mother's womb. Do you believe that? Then you have to believe in foreordination. See, that's great. Not by choice. It's by the grace of God. Now, the only way I could teach this and know it's true, which it is, by the Scripture. Why? I do not know. Later, it just began to come that we just tell things. There's people probably sitting here from Jeffersonville right now, so close to the little city. Months before things happen. My manager at this platform, weeks before things take place. I see it. It's just as natural as you're sitting there. And being a Baptist minister, I'd talk that to my clergymen and my elders and so forth. Well, they'd say, keep away from it, Billy. Don't have nothing to do with that. That's back hundreds of years ago. We're living in another age, so forth. It kept on that. Got greater. I have a little church at Jeffersonville. I, I wasn't supported by the church. I worked as a game warden in Indiana, as patrolman on High Line. Worked all my life. I never took an offering in my life. And I worked past the church, not because they wasn't willing to take care of me, but I was able to work. Why not work? And then when years pass on by, maybe in a few days I'll try to get the story to you, maybe on Sunday afternoon or something, when I can. Don't want to take too much of your time keeping this hot building. But I must give you a background so you'll sanely know what, you're, what, it's, what it's all about. And I want you to tell others, if you hear criticism, I want you to tell others so, you'll know, so they'll know. And now. 
after a bit, it, when I got converted, he kept more than ever. It predicted the 19 and 37 flood when hundreds of men stood there and laughed and turned their heads and it predicted 22 feet of water over the street. So I stood there and seen it in the vision. They said the boy's gone crazy. And just a few weeks after that, 22 feet of water went over the Spring Street in Jefferson Hill, Indiana. And just, it would just show things all along. Then, when I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it got greater than ever. Well, I never noticed too much of it. So one day, it been at me so much, and people tell me, forget about it. And I was trying to shun it. And I went to a little cabin. I was scoutmaster of the Baptist troop at Jeffersonville for years. And up the Boy Scout camp, I went up there where I have a little cabin. I went to pray. Sometimes I pray all night. And maybe a day and night. And while praying there that night, about around two, between two and three in the morning, I was asking God to never let it appear to me again. And I said, well, maybe I'm, maybe I'm doing wrong. And as soon as the first time in my life that I ever embraced it to me, and I said, I realized that people said, why, that would be the worst of the devil. And then when I tried to shove it away from me, then I thought, well, look, the scripture never come to me, but when Jesus was born in Judea, the priests and the clergymen were all arguing what kind of buttons they should have on their coats, and some magi followed a star. That star passed by every observatory there was and every planetarium, and there was nobody seen that star but them three magi. Is that right? You don't have no record of it in history. Believers and everything walked on the streets of Jerusalem and Bethlehem, but nobody seen that but the Magi's. It was sent to the Magi's who was looking for the star of Jacob to rise. Why didn't the priests and the holy man see that? It wasn't for them to see it. Then I see that when he was, became of age and was anointed of God to go do good works, as soon as he began to cast out devils, you know what the priests and the clergymen said? He is Beelzebub. He has a devil, which is spiritually. When he knew what was in the people's hearts, they said, he's just reading the mind. He's Beelzebub. Is that true? He cast out devils through Beelzebub, which we all know was a spiritual prince of the devil. That's how he knows those things. He's a prince of the devil. When Paul and Barnabas came down from up there at Paul and Silas, a little old fortune teller sat on the street and said, well, that man up there, them clergymen said, well, that man's of the devil. They have just turned the world upside down, the imposters. But that little old fortune teller said, them man are a man of God. They tell us the way of life. And Paul rebuked the spirit out of her, the spirit of deviation. Is that true? And I said, so could it be today that men are failing to know that. And I said, God, if I've been wrong, forgive me. And I no more than I prayed my prayer till I seen a light come on the floor. And I looked up, and above it was that whirl of light still there again, whirling around. But the first time in all my life, it spoke to me hundreds of times. But coming walking, I heard somebody walking. I looked like that. It scared me. It would you. And walking right to me, not a vision, just as natural as I am, come a man, about 200 pounds in weight. He had his arms folded. He was a strong-looking man. He had a peaceful-looking face and very calm. He had dark hair to his shoulders, smooth face. And he walked up to me and looked down at me pathetically and said, Do not fear. And oh, when I heard that voice, I know it was the same one that said, Don't smoke or drink. I knew that voice. He said, I am sent from the presence of the Almighty God to tell you that your peculiar birth and life has been to indicate that you're to pray for sick people and take this to the world. He said, If you'll get the people to believe you and be sincere, nothing shall stand before your prayer. And you're going into all parts of the world, and kings and rulers and great men will be come to be prayed for, and there'll be great things and signs and there great things to happen. I said, Sir, I'm uneducated. I have a grammar school education, and I'm with my people, and we're all poor, and I can't preach. I can't make a—I uh, said, I would not be able. The people would not believe me. I can't uh, uh, govern my words enough, in other words, if the people would believe me. He said, I'll be with you. And I said, but they won't believe me, sir. He said, as the prophet Moses was given two signs to vindicate his, his calling, so will you be given two signs. He said, these visions you've seen down through your life will be given to you. First, you'll take people by the hand and don't have nothing to say myself, but that it'll tell the people what's wrong, what the diseases they've had. 
And if they won't believe this, it'll come to pass that you'll tell them the very thing in the secret of their heart, and by this they will believe. And I said, Where, whence cometh this? You see, I was questioned. He said, Don't you understand that upon Jesus Christ our Lord, when Philip found Nathaniel and Nathaniel came to him not to believe, he said, Behold, an Israelite, indeed you know the Scripture. And Nathaniel looked at him and said, When did you know me, Rabbi? He said, Before Philip called you when you were under the tree. And he fell upon his face and worshipped him and said, Thou art Christ. No mental telepathy there, no Beelzebub up there. Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. And when the woman at the well, he talked to her a little while, got her attention. He said, Go get your husband. He went straight to her trouble. She said, I have none. said, You have five. And she said, Come see a man who told me everything I did. Isn't this the very Christ? He knew where a fish was and had a coin in his mouth. And he did not claim to do anything. When he passed by the pool of Bethesda, there were lame, halt, blind, withered, maybe 10,000. The Bible said great multitude. There was a man laying there that maybe had diabetes. He had an infirmity for 28 years. And Jesus knew that he lay there. He healed that one man and left the rest of the crowd lay. St. John 5. Is that right? And the Jews questioned him, the 19th verse. Listen to him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself, but what he sees the Father doing, that doeth the Son likewise. For whatsoever the Father doeth, he showeth the Son. Is that right? Then Jesus did nothing of himself. He seen a vision of what God was doing, and that Jesus done. Is that right? St. John 5, 19, which is many other scriptures that go with it. But that's true. We believe that. He saw the vision. For instance, the resurrection of Lazarus. I thank thee, Father, thou hearest me already. Back there said, when he sent for him to come pray for him, he ignored it and went on. He said, Lazarus sleepeth, and for, or he's dead. And for your sake, I'm glad I wasn't there, but I go wake him. See? And that's the tomb he already knew what the Father had told him. He said with his own words that he'd done nothing until the Father showed him. The angel of God declared that, that Jesus Christ said, These things that I do shall you do also. Do you believe that? Then if he could do nothing, take no credit for nothing, only done what the Father showed him to do, that settled it, didn't it? Then that spirit that was upon him, he went away a little while, you see me no more, yet the world see me no more, yet you shall see me, for I'll be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. Is that right? Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. If I said I've done these things, I'd be a liar. I say I do them not. I say Jesus Christ shows them to me through his sovereign grace and mercy, not for my sake, for it's not my healing, it's your healing. And after he sent his word, sent his ministers, now he sent his prophetic gift to increase the faith of the people to get them to believe on him. If that isn't mercy, if that isn't grace, I don't know what it is. Now, if I come to you tonight, listen closely. If I come to you tonight and said that I had the spirit of, of a criminal, John Dillinger, that John Dillinger's spirit was up on me, you'd expect me to have big guns and be an outlaw like he was. If I had his spirit, that's what I would do. You know, God never takes his spirit from the earth. God takes his man, but never his spirit. Do you know that? Say, for you took Elijah, a double portion of Elijah's spirit come up on Elisha. Is that right? And several hundred years later, it come out in John the Baptist. Is that right? And it's predicted to come out again in the last day. Is that right? God takes his man, but not his spirit. His spirit remains here. When the spirit's gone, the church is gone then. There'll be no more salvation, no more here. Mercy's over then. The spirit's gone. The Holy Spirit was up on the apostles. He's here tonight. The same Holy Spirit. God takes his man, but never his spirit. Now, if I told you I had the spirit of, of this famous outlaw, you'd expect me to act like him, to be anointed like him. If I told you I had the spirit of some famous artist, you'd expect me to stretch the canvas across here and catch those waves of that ocean out there, of that lake, and paint him with a foam on him like some famous artist, if I had his spirit. And if I confess to have the spirit of Jesus Christ on us, we should do the things that Jesus did. Jesus said he could do nothing but what the Father showed him. Now, 
When the angel of the Lord appeared to Moses, it wasn't Moses, it was the angel of God. What was he when he appeared? A pillar of fire. Is that right? And he led the children of Israel, and any scholar knows that that was the angel of the covenant, which was Christ. Is that right? And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and as he read the, led the church back there in the natural body, he's leading us today in the spiritual body. And this supernatural being, which has been vindicated by pictures and through the American Photographer Association, through the examinators and everything, and hangs tonight, and is the only time that a supernatural being was ever taken, we'll introduce that later, is share with us tonight. Now, Christians and friends, I say, I come to you tonight in Toledo in the name of Jesus Christ, representing him as his humble servant. I have nothing that I can do within myself to help you, but he is here and able and willing to perform things that will make you believe in him and accept him. If I speak and what I say comes not to pass, don't you believe me, or I would be false. But if I testify of something and our Heavenly Father witnesses and vindicates that to be the truth, then you believe him. Is that fair enough? Any man can come here and say this or that. Or you can say anything you wish to if you wish to be a false witness. But you saying it doesn't make it so. But when God speaks it, that vindicates it to be so. Now, it's written at the mouth of two or more witnesses, let every word be established. Is that right? Now, I have spoke to you tonight that our Heavenly Father appeared at my birth and sent me to help you. And I stand tonight as his servant to help you. I, it may not be according to your theological teaching. God usually does things contrary to what way people had it figured out to be. Look at those priests. They couldn't believe Jesus come like that, born in a manger. That was all together. He's always done that. He did the antelope and destruction. And in my opinion, brother clergyman, when Jesus appears the second time, he'll be altogether different than what we've got it figured out that he'll be. He hides it from the eyes of the wise and prudent and will reveal it to babes such as will learn. It's spiritually understood. Now, may the good Lord bless you. With all my heart, I pray that. I have no way to heal, but as the individuals come to the platform or set in the audience, we give out prayer cards in order to keep a big commotion from turning and saying, we got cheated and you didn't give us a chance to get in line. Every day we give out prayer cards and just call from somewhere in a, in the, uh, uh, the bunch of cards from that night for you people to come. That is a necessary. That only lines up a few here, and we pray for them. And I say this with the Bible over my heart. If you, the people who have not the prayer cards, or with or without, if you in, that, in this building in each night will believe with all your heart that I have told you the truth and accept Jesus Christ as your healer, God will show me in the audience what's happened to you. Is that fair enough? That's what I say in the name of our Lord Jesus, not as I claim to be anything myself. I'm the least among you, and I do not say that to be humble. I say it from my heart. Many of you members stand on these street corners going without something to eat and raising your children on a few crumbs that was given you to pave the way for this. If there's any credit, give it, give it to you. I miss following the road that you paved, so brother, please recognize the gift of God. Not because it's me. It's not just with me. It's with you. You're the one. That you're the, I might be able to see. I might have been born for that purpose, which I was. But the blessing is for you, the individual. So believe it. Don't let it pass by. The hour is coming near. Now, you tonight, we got just a short time. Now, I want you to believe this of me. Believe that I told you the truth. Do you believe God the Father? Do you believe in the Son, Jesus Christ? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Wonderful. That makes you a Christian. But in order to get the benefits of this divine gift, this angel, maybe the same one is on the water or the pool. I don't know. Maybe it's the same one as with Paul. Somebody said angels wasn't in the New Testament. The Holy Ghost led the church. That's true. But, brother, angels are always ministering spirits in every age. You believe there's angels in the New Testament? How about Philip? What was it appeared to him, the Holy Ghost or the angel of the Lord, and told him to go to the desert Gaza? The angel of the Lord. Is that right? How many believe Peter had the Holy Ghost? 
Was it the Holy Ghost or the angel of the Lord when he was having a prayer meeting at John Mark's house that shined in like a light and it over him like that and touched him and broke the shackles loose and taken him out? It was the angel of the Lord. Is that right? How many believe St. Paul had the Holy Ghost? After 14 days and nights on the ocean, not stars, moon, or nothing, he was down in the gallery and came back out, all hopes that God could ever be saved. He said, Man and brethren, be of a good courage, for the angel of God, whose servant I am, stood by me last night and told me there be no loss of life. Wherefore, I believe, God, that it shall be just as it was shown to me. Who did he say did it? I myself have wisdom. He said, The angel of God, whose servant I am. How many believe John the Revelator had the Holy Ghost? I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify these things. Is that right? And the whole book of Revelations was showed, John, by the angel of the Lord. Is that right? And John fell down to worship the angel. The angel said, See that you do it not. Is that right? For I am of thy fellow servants, the prophets. Is that true? The prophetic spirit that had been on the prophets down through the age was here prophesying through John, showing him by an angel. That same spirit is in the building tonight. Now, if your eyes are veiled like Balaam of old, even to the dumb mule who saw the angel standing in the way, may God move back the veil tonight and open all of our eyes, as they did uh, Gehazi's eyes down at Dauphin when Elijah said, there's more with us than there is with them. He said, well, there's just only two of us and other wives. And look at the police scene. He said, God opened that boy's eyes, and around that prophet stood chariots of fire, and the hills was on fire, and angels of fire. Is that right? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Don't try to figure it out. Just accept it. I want you to believe God. I want you to believe Christ. I want you to believe the Holy Ghost. And I want you to believe me. Now, you can believe in them and not believe that I've told you the truth. You'll never benefit by it. you know that? The same people that believed in God and were zealous of God killed Jesus. But Jesus said, as you have believed in God, believe also in me. Was that right? They were God-believers, believed in his Father, but they must believe that he was the Son sent from the Father. Is that right? Not the Father, but he was the Son sent from the Father. I'm, I am neither the Father, Son, nor Holy Ghost. I am a man, your brother, vindicated, ministry vindicated by a supernatural being, not me, the angel of the Lord. It has come from God to minister these blessings to you. To that electric light there, say, look what a great war I am. The wire has nothing to do with it. It's the current in the wire that makes the light, not the wire. And I am as the wire. I have no light of my own until it's turned on from somewhere else. Do you see that I give praise to Jesus Christ, to God? It's not of myself, it's of Him. You believe. And now at the end of the service, Sunday night, if the secrets of the heart is manifested, and the sick healed, the blind see, and your secrets told out, your disease is interpreted by the powers of Almighty God, then you can say Brother Branham is a false prophet. But if it is the truth, and God vindicates it to be the truth, then you accept Jesus as your Savior and your healer, and give him all praise and glory, and go around and live for him the rest of your days, telling others how good he is. That's fair enough, isn't it? God be with you is my prayer. All right, shall we bow our heads again, if our brother organist will come to the organ? Oh, God been hot in the building, many of these dear people setting panning, very warm up here on the stage. Now, dear God, we are not here to be seen. Thou knowest that thy, thy service is not a show card, by no means, Lord, neither is it any vaudeville act. It's the power of God unto salvation. I'm trying to represent you tonight, Lord, but the angel has been sent and carried me through the days by saying to these people that you're the same yesterday and forever, and I have nothing to do within myself of these things that is you and your divine mercy sent to them. I've done all that I know how to do, Father. I pray now that the angel who has been with me down through the age will come near to me now. There's many sick people sitting out here, Father. There's many sitting out there that's in need. I pray that you'll be with me and will help me and reveal to me the things that I might know that would help your children a little closer. And God grant that it will be a great meeting these nights. And may the streets packed with people and thousands come to your Son, Jesus, 
And may every wheelchair be empty, may every heart trouble be cured, every cancer, may there be great glory in the people, and may every, every church receive a great revival. For we ask that in the name of thy beloved child, Jesus Christ, amen. A boy says he give out 50 cards. Look on the little card that you receive, and you'll see a letter on the back called D. You'll see number on the back. That's cards merely to keep you lined up here on the platform. Now let them with D number one, number two. Let's call. How much room, uh, Brother Baxter? Do you see what we got down there? How many could we call in there? Ten, fifteen. The how many? All right, that's the first 15, from D1 to D15. You people sitting near them, it's got cards. It may be deaf. You look at their cards and examine it, because they wouldn't be able to hear me and line up here according to your number in miracle order, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up to D10, or D15, rather, D1 to D15. We'll begin with them to start and just pray for as many as we possibly can. The rest of you that has your prayer card, how many in here are sick and doesn't have a prayer card? Let's see your hand. All around, everywhere. Now raise up your hand. Sick and without a prayer card. All right? I have just a mutual ID. You're sitting here mostly in front. Now, while they're lining up the, that first group, you look this way, friends. If there's one person in this building that I know or recognize, God, who is my judge right now, I do not see one person that I know. You're strangers to me. I do not know you. Nowhere. Now, in a few moments, if you see me acting strange, promise me that you won't criticize it. It may, may seem because I go, something happens. How many has ever seen the picture of the angel of the Lord, one we have? Let's see you raise your hand. Many of you have seen it. Here. Well, you all understand. You've been in other meetings. It comes down and anoints, and in the anointing, it, it does the talk, and I have nothing to do with it. Now, if you will believe, and no matter what it tells you to do, you do just exactly what it says and see what happens. Now, it, does, it doesn't heal everybody. It's only by faith that you're healed. But it knows. Many times I see people and see they're going to die. I never say nothing about it unless I'm directly led. If I sit turn dark around the people, I know they haven't got many days. But I never say that because sometimes Prayer could change things. We realize that. Hezekiah was told by the prophet he was going to die. You believe God told him that? And Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and wept bitterly. And God heard his prayer and sent the prophet back to him and said, I heard his prayer. Spared him for 15 years. Is that true? Now, now you without prayer cards, this is your, probably your first night, your first meeting, I mean. I give you this tonight. If you don't get a prayer card, that has nothing to do with it. You look this away. And you believe with all your heart that I've told you the truth. And I'll watch the audience, and as I begin to feel it pull from me, and if God shows me anything concerning you, I'll speak to you. See? Now, you don't just forget about your prayer card. See? Just look this way and pray. And God is able at this time to reveal it. May God grant it. Now, I want everybody to be just as reverent as they can be. And now. Mothers with your children, sometimes, especially in epilepsy, it causes lots of trouble. And you keep your children near you. And when I tell you to bow your head, you do it. And remember this, as I start at the beginning of the meeting, so you'll know, I am not responsible. Let me say that again, because according to law, I am not responsible for anything that happens to critics during the time of the service. For be it assured to you that these powers, which will be explained later in another service, they are absolutely demons that come from one and go to another. How many know that's true? Well, that's fine. I thought I had a solid all in there. Remember in the Bible time, they wanted to come out. They're helpless without they're embodied. And when they get embodied, that's when they're in trouble. Now, come, lady. And now, everybody's just as reverent as you can be. Now, I want the audience to watch this, so I'm trying to talk as much as I can before this, the anointing comes on deeply. I want you to watch the face, the face of the patient when they come. 
when the anointing comes down. Watch the expression change. They realize they're in the presence of a supernatural one. And now the people are strange. And at first night it'll be a little bit strange. But I want you all to be with me in prayer and be praying out there now. And just believing in your faith will pull to me. And as it does, I see the vision. Then when I see the vision, I speak of what I see, and you know who it is, then. Everyone ready? Now, you up here at the wheelchairs, and they don't think your case is helpless. It's not. Believe. How do you do, sister? Now, you're the, you're the patient, aren't you, sister? You were strangers, I believe. I don't believe I've ever seen you. If I have, I don't recognize you. You've seen me before. In Flint, Michigan. Was you at the meeting? Just didn't get in, I suppose. Best I remember the Flint meeting, it was quite a meeting. Yes, and Mr. Baxter just see anointing comes down and it um, and when it does, why sometimes my voice is you know, they want it so the audience will hear it. See? And now um, let's see if they can hear it all right. Can you hear me back there all right? Can you hear it all right? All right then. Now um, all right, you now I never talked to you or anything. I don't know nothing about you in that manner. You see, it's just used this at the meeting, a Flint meeting, and I believe the first night there, I think we had about 8,000 or something like 8,500 well, or something. I went through the fast prayer line. Well, there's a fast prayer line that you pass through. Well, probably I, I stopped that a long time. No, ma'am. Now, what I'm trying to get at, that you and I, as far as, as knowing each other, are strangers. We're strangers. And with my hand before God, I don't, I never remember of ever seeing you, and I have no way standing with my head bowed and the people just passing by me just as hard as they could. I wouldn't know hundreds and hundreds going by. Now, there's something wrong with you, or you wouldn't be here, and you're not a critic. You're a Christian. You're a Christian. I, as soon as you walked up and I turned, I felt the Spirit witness. Now, there's something taking place to you right now, isn't there? Now, as a witness to the audience, would you raise your hand if that's true, a very odd strange feeling. Now, her face is just now moving. The Spirit is coming on me now. See? Now, if I ever knew anything about you, it would have to come from some supernatural being. I, I don't know you, see, nothing about you. It would have to be known. Now, you are, fa uh, are aware of this, that you come here and I don't know you, and now you have a witness there that there's something supernatural a moving. Uh, and the feeling is kind of a a warm welcome, isn't that right? That's see, in preaching you get uh, anointed and a bit happy, but this is more of a settled feeling. See, it's just moving back and forth between us now. And now, if I could be able to know anything of you, it would have to come through the supernatural realm. And you believe that it's what I say it is, the, the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, ma'am, that's the reason you're here. Yes, ma'am. Now, of course, I see you wearing glasses. That would be your eyes. But there's probably something different. I don't want you to say nothing to me just so I can see, see you. Now, I don't mean see. You know what? The prophet Elijah said, if it wasn't I respected the presence of Jehoshaphat, I wouldn't even look at you. See? In other words, look to see. You mean spiritually see what's wrong. Now, he's lovely, isn't he? The Lord Jesus, he certainly is. Now, perceiving that you are a Christian and you believe the Word of God, Yes, ma'am. You're a victim of circumstance. You've got many things wrong with you. Isn't that right? You have a you have a stone in your gallbladder for one thing. Isn't that right? And you also have a kidney stone. Isn't that right? You have your suffering. Uh, see, what is that? It's a shot. Oh, it's di diabetes, isn't it? You have diabetes. You're nervous, aren't you? Extremely nervous. Life hasn't been pleasant to you either. There's been like a string, yes, of down to there, a great dark string. Was that the truth, what was said? That was absolute truth. Was that the truth? Absolutely true. All right. That wasn't me that said that. I heard my voice, but I didn't know. I've seen you. You've been prayed much. You've been prayed for but many different times. And isn't that right? I've seen the vision before you. Now, do you believe me as his prophet? All right, go home. You're healed. Jesus Christ has made you well. Sister, and God bless you, Lord. Thank you, God bless you, sister. 
All right. Everyone be just as regular as you can be now. Uh, all right, Sonny, you bring them in if you want. How do you do, sir? Isn't our master lovely? Oh, I tell you, I don't know what I could do without him. He, he's been my life, my joy, and all I have. And I perceive that you believe him also. So welcome, Spirit. How would I know you was a Christian instead of a critic? It's the same Spirit that knows that Nathaniel was a, a good man, a truthful man. And now in the, Jesus said to him, or Nathaniel said to Jesus, he said, Behold an Israelite in duty, whom there is no guile. And Nathaniel was surprised. He said, Whence knowest thou me, Rabbi? He said, Before Philip called you, I saw you under the tree. Is that right? Now the first thing has been said to you that you are a Christian. Is that right? You're a believer, and you're suffering with a heart trouble. Isn't that right? You need to go home now, for you're going to be well. Jesus Christ has healed you, my brother. And God bless you and be well. Let us say praise the Lord, everyone else. I never prayed for the first two people. Their faith healed them before they even got here. See? Now you say, Brother Bram, how do you feel that? While I'm talking to the patient, I just get real weak. And I know that the blessing of the Lord has went to them and has healed them. Or, and I have faith and believe with all your heart. How do you do, sister? Our master is lovely, isn't he? I, I do not know at this time what's wrong with you, but you are a believer, and there's something out in the audience pulling the same way. That's a kindred spirit. It's something moving the same thing that you have. The spirits are kindred, just like you've heard birds of a feather, see? They go together. And demon power, demonology, is, works the same manner. And you're standing here, at your, my sister, uh, you're suffering, and you, we're strangers, aren't we? And uh, just a moment, I, if someone sitting right in there was the same thing you have, and it's bothering me quite a bit, would you turn this way just a moment? This, no, this way. You look to me. Just turn this way. I want to talk to you just a moment. I'm trying to get my back to the case, you see, because it, it, it bothers me. I can't see what it is. And they're pulling it. It's a kindred, just like, here's what it is. You are human. And I am human, and each one of us are possessed with the Spirit. And now this in here come to me for faith, and you are suffering, and, the, and in you is a spirit of sickness or something, and whatever it is, it knows if, it, if I can get you to believe, it's got to leave you, you see? And that's the reason it fights, so that's what makes it such a pull. And it's got a kindred spirit out there pulling the same way for help, you see, for he knows that he's troubled, for you're already healed. You had a female trouble, didn't you? You're healed. That's right. I just... I knew I was going to be... Yeah. Your faith has saved you, sister. You, and lady, you sitting on the end there, didn't you have a female trouble sitting out there? Stand up on your feet just a minute. You're healed too, sister. God bless you. You can go. All right. God bless you. Now you may go. God bless you, sister. You're going to be well. The woman had abscess on the ovary. Now everyone be real reverent. Believe with all your heart. God will bring it to pass. While I was talking to that woman, a strange feeling was taking place in you, wasn't it, lady? See, that's what it was. It was coming. I couldn't see just where it was, and I seen the light, the angel of God, go hang over that woman. And when I spoke to her, it come down over her like that right then. And just as soon as I spoke to you, a warm, welcome feeling struck you. Is that right? If it is, stand up so the people know I'm telling you the truth. Is that right? Why over? That's when the angel of God blessed you, and you're you're healed now. You can you can be well. All right. If you'll bring the lady. All right. I ever want to be a reverend, bleeding with all your heart. God shall bring it to pass. How do you do, lady? <laughs> now, I, I beg your pardon. 
you're the lady that Brother Bosworth wrote and told me that you were coming to be prayed for. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And uh, when did he write that? Or is that the letter that you said it's Brother Bosworth is sending a patient? All right. Are you, um, where are you from, Florida? Joliet, Illinois. secret to me. It is. No. See, I understand and know that. But here's one thing that's your trouble. Do you believe me as his prophet? I believe. With I all believe. your heart. I believe. See, you've tried and tried. You've never pleased yourself with your life and so forth. You've always wanted a closer walk and to go with God. You felt when you were a young girl that you had a calling or something to be done. And you had a call like from God. You've never fulfilled that. You've never done what God told you to do. If you will surrender your entire being to God tonight, God will heal you. Do you believe that with all your... That's what you want to do. See, sister, you don't tell me that. you got a cancer. That's what you got. And what's wrong with you? Exactly. You're, you have a cancer. And that's what's hurting you right now. And you don't have too much longer to make your decision. And tonight you must make it for Jesus Christ and serve him with all your heart the rest of your days. Do you believe that? Will you accept that? You know what I've told you the truth, that you know that part. But what kind of a gift can this be that? You must receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and, and live for him the rest of your days and be a servant of his. If you believe that and be reverent and believe it and go out of here and do as I tell you to do, you'll get well. Do you believe that with all you? believe I'll sleep in all Yes, yes ma'am. See, you're mentally disturbed, but, but that's not what I'm trying to get at, see. Is the same for us. The first thing is first. That's God. You yes. must receive God first. That's right. All right. Yes. Now you bow your head. Yes. Heavenly Father, be merciful to this woman. I pray, God, as stand here before her, that you'll have mercy upon her. As I lay my hands upon her, a woman aware that she can't stay here much longer, unless something is done. And I pray thee, God, to now as it's been told to her what to do, grant, Lord, that she'll leave here tonight with a happy condition, just surrender herself to you and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the power of God up in her life. And I believe, Lord, that you'll call her and send her to be well. Grant these blessings I lay hands on her in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you now, Lord. Let's say thanks to the Lord, everybody. All right. All right. Come, lady. Are everybody reverent now? Now the next thing lays within the woman. It's got to be her. Or she won't get well. All right, now, just reverent. How do you do, sister? I see you wearing glasses, which that is something in your eyes, but people can see that, you see. The thing of it is, if there's anything wrong with you mysteriously, that people can see you look like a healthy person all but your eyes. Of course, you're wearing glasses. But now, you're truly a believer. That is right. With a real, true faith, and you're a Christian, filled with his spirit. Your eyes have been stigmatized. The stigmatism has caused you to be that way for a long, long time. And you've got something wrong in your back, haven't you? Isn't that right? You did have. Jesus Christ has made you whole, sister. You can walk off the platform and be well. God bless you. Go rejoice and be happy. Let us say praise be to God. Believe him with all your heart now, and God shall bring it to pass. All right, everybody reverent now. Good evening, sister. Isn't our master lovely? Yeah. I just love him with all my heart. I believe you do, too. Um, do you believe that that's his spirit that you feel now? Do you believe that that's him? You do. You and I are strangers, aren't we, sister? We don't know each other at all. 
if I would know anything of you, it would have to be like Jesus. The reason I talk to you is merely to contact your spirit. You understand that? This microphone's alive, you see. I've got to contact your spirit first before I can see what's happened in your life. See, that's none of the audience's business. I'm just talking to you, you see. And merely this just to contact you. Yes, ma'am. You believe that I have told the truth. Yes, the confession that I've made, you believe it to be the truth, don't yes, you, sister? You've been a victim for quite a while, haven't you, sister? Yes, you suffer with a female trouble, which has caused you for quite a while, and you got a heart trouble. Isn't that right? Yes, Smothering around the heart. Is that yes, true? Sir. And you believe that, and when you prayed, you was praying recently, said if, and thought if I, you could ever get to where I was, and you heard that you that you'd be healed. Is that right? Yes, That's the prayer that you said. How would I know your prayer when you was kneeling there by the side of that chair that day? Come here. Almighty God, author of life and giver of every gift, as I lay my hands upon this little woman, and thou hast said in thy words, These signs shall follow them that bleed. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. God grant her healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, sister. Go rejoicing and happy and be well. Let's say praise the Lord, everybody. All right, bring the lady. Come, sister. Good evening. It's quite a warm night we're having here in Toledo. Yes, yes, ma'am. Um, you love him, do you? You think he's wonderful? Mm -hmm. I'm just merely saying these words like the master said to the woman, go get me a drink. Well, he could have got his own drink. She said, it's not customary for the Jews to ask the Samaritans something or favors. Or, he said, but if you knew who you were talking to, you'd ask me for a drink. And I'd give you waters that you don't come here to draw. And otherwise, he was trying to contact her life to see what was wrong. And as the Father showed him, he revealed just exactly what her trouble was, and it was corrected. Is that right? Is he the same yesterday, today, and forever? And you believe that I told you the truth, that this is him. Yes, ma'am. I'm not reading your mind, sister. I'm just, this is the Holy Spirit of God. You've been having trouble. Lots of it. I see a dark street coming behind you. A road of trouble. That is right, isn't it? I see, yes. You're lately, you've been giving awful nervous spells, haven't you? And I see you, especially in the afternoon, sometimes you get, your strength all leaves you. You sit down in the chair. It seems to be gloomy around you, doesn't it? Oh, yes, I see with it. Yes, you're a tubercular, too, aren't you? You have tuberculosis, isn't that right? Mm -hmm. You wasn't thinking of those things back there. So you couldn't be mental telepathy, could it, sister? It's the power of Almighty God. you believe that? Come here, sister. Oh, dear Jesus, you're here, the same lovely one, the fairest of ten thousands, as the prophet said. The lily of the valley and the morning star, and seeing this little mother here for the years past, and see her suffering, and is begin to speak and reveal her heart to her. I felt that you touched her, dear God. And I lay my hands upon her now in commemoration of thy word. May she be healthy and well all of her life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look, mother, look this way just a moment. I want to ask you something. I never seen you in my life, as I know of. We're strangers together. And if there would be something in your life, whatever, sometimes I don't I'm not able to repeat. But you heard me telling you something, didn't you? That was that was my voice, but it was not me operating it. It was a supernatural being. And while I was talking, no doubt you could feel that there was something going on. Is that right? 
and did it tell you the truth? Was it the truth? Yeah. All right. Now, if it was telling you the truth, what was? Now, you're beginning to feel that again, aren't you? It's the same spirit I felt that he wanted me to talk to you. Yes, ma'am? If God is able to let me know what has been in your life, what you know is the truth, he lets me know what will be. Do you believe it? You're healed of you two, Berkeley. You're going home to be well. God bless you, sister. Now, you're going to be a well woman. God bless you, sister. Let us say praise be to God for his goodness and mercy. You feel better about it, sister, sitting there? You do? Wonderful. I kept feeling it moving that way, and I kept looking. The blessing's up on the both of you. That's right. It's, it's moving wonderfully. I don't remember what it was you were prayed for, but I, I know that you're healed, whatever it was. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. God be with you and help you. What are you praying about over there, lady, sitting there with, a, with your head down? You're praying, aren't you? Do you believe that God sent me and I'm telling you the truth? Do you believe that he sent me as his prophet? Do you believe if, I'd, if he could reveal from here to there what your trouble is? Stand up on your feet just a moment. I want you to look this away. You were praying, and I noticed you praying. It attracted my attention. I don't know you. You're a stranger to me. As far are we strangers? It is. Yes, ma'am. This is going to shock you, lady, because I don't believe you know what it is. You have cancer. And wait a minute. Isn't that a—you have two growths, don't you? And isn't that on your—I believe it's on your right side, isn't it? Two growths on right? Yes, sir. That's what I thought. All right. Do you believe me as this prophet? Go believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ will make you well. God bless you, sister. Have faith in God. Say, the man sitting there next to you, that must be your husband. I see there's a connection. I felt his spirit go out in gratitude. That's your, uh, is that your wife, sir? If that is, right, is that right? That's your wife. I felt the relationship. Say, you're suffering all, so you have a rupture, don't you? Isn't that right? If that's right, raise up your hand. All right, go home and believe with all your heart, and Jesus Christ will make you whole. God bless you, my brother. Have faith. Believe God with all your heart. All right, bring the lady. Have faith now. Would you come forward, sister, now? Come believe with all your heart and don't doubt at all. Do you believe me as his prophet, as his servant? You believe. God be with you, Mother. Yes? You're diabetic, aren't you, Mother? Yes. Oh, insulin and stuff is so bad. I see you with those shots. Now, is that true? And you have a heart trouble or something. I see you smother, hold your hands like this quite often. You get shorter breath, don't you? Isn't that? I'm not reading your mind. I'm seeing your vision. Yes. And, and you have to watch yourself when you're walking on a street, don't you? Yes, I see it was in. Now, I see you trying to get off of a, a curb and you where well, you were taking your time. Isn't that right? Yes. Reasonably, by a place where there was a signboard, run yes. this away. Isn't that right? Yes. Mother, go home and believe the Lord Jesus Christ and be made completely all. Let us say praise be to the Lord Jesus Christ with all of our hearts. Bless her heart. You believe? With all your heart? I look, and don't nobody disbelieve. Now, you're going to see great things of the Lord done. Poor soul. Now, Mother, you that was up here a few minutes ago, you feel better now, don't you? Yes, amen. What was told you was the truth, wasn't it? And you didn't think of nothing about that. It's gone. Was that right? Um, then you know it has to come from God, doesn't it, Mother? God bless you. That's fine. Sir? 
Yes, you felt that hit you then, didn't you? All right, stand up on your feet. Yes, sir. You believe with all your heart, sir? You do? You were warning me to contact you in some way, wasn't you? Sitting there wondering about that. You have something wrong with the breaking out over your body or something, isn't it, in your hands? Isn't that true? You want to be healed of that, don't you? Do you believe that I'm God's prophet, his servant? you believe that what I tell you to be the truth? Say, I see something standing in your way. Don't you have a habit, don't you? Don't you have a habit of smoking or something like that? You smoke cigars, don't you? I see you stand on the corner with one in your hand. Forsake them cigars and go home and be well, my brother, and make it right with God, and you shall be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Do you believe him with all your heart? You want to accept him now as your healer? He's here. Stand to your feet, you that believe him as your healer at this time. Raise your hands and say, Lord Jesus, I accept you. Oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray thee heal every person here.